Hello, my name's David Ridgway and welcome to the Weekly Wind-Up. This week we're going to look at the issues that affect and irritate young people here in Huddersfield. To help me with this, I'm delighted to welcome to the show Isaac Barnett, who is a member of the Youth Council. Hi Isaac, thanks Hello. for coming on. Yeah, thank you. After the break, uh, we will be discussing matters to do with transportation, but beforehand we'll be talking about other things. So welcome to you. Many people of my age tell me that young people are becoming more out of control and that they lack purpose and ambition. I don't think it will be too helpful to debate that statement, but I do want to learn about some of the frustrations that young people feel and how you try to overcome them. At a recent Youth Council, we discussed the results of a survey that you'd had commissioned, and I was fascinated to hear that crime and transport are two of the major issues that affect young people today. You, of course, Isaac, are a youth councillor. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I am, yeah. I yeah. Uh, to look further at these issues and other matters, let me first ask, for the benefit of the viewers, what is the Youth Council and how do you become a part of it? But basically, what the Youth Council is, is, uh, is to represent young people in the whole of Kirklees and uh, how to become is basically like a, a voluntary job basically basically you we used to have like a, a voting system where it used to be like four to five candidates and used to be in uh, every school but but uh, it didn't work at the end so what we did was we uh, uh, we uh, go out into like schools and like to see uh, schools and colleges see if anybody wants to sign up to join in the uh, youth council so what benefit have you gained from being a member of the Youth Council and more importantly, what do you do to bring your experiences to others so that they can also benefit? Basically what I get, uh, gain is basically express my, my views to the Youth Council but also back up with uh, young people's views as well to, uh, to, to make that decision a bit... Uh, uh, easier for the uh, councillors to understand to make it more balanced balance okay. view. So, uh, so what happens if uh, your views are not necessarily balanced out by or supported by the youth council as a whole? We have our own views but also we have other views but we also have we uh, at the end we uh, we agree um, the Greer program. Uh, we agree, like, uh, like for example, the uh, youth summit, for example, yeah. and uh, going into schools and colleges. We don't beat uh, each other, like in the uh, council, however. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, fine, for a good point. But, but we we more we more we more respectful, and uh, we listen to everyone's view, and we may like it or we may not like it, but it's that person's view and we respect that 13 you can join in the Youth Council. And Do you uh, find the views of the 13-year-olds differ a lot from the views of the 18-year-olds? It can be sometimes. Is it, a, it, is it a conflict? Not really, no. We're not, we're not, we don't fight each other. We, no, uh, I don't, do I don't, <laughs> no, I mean a mental conflict, a discussion uh, yeah, point. A discussion point. Uh, not really, no. Okay, no, no. good. Do you rely on your teachers for guidance? Only if we if we uh, got like surveys or a poster to put you. So they will yeah. they will guide you in how to do stuff, uh, but they won't necessarily tell you what to say. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'd be they very. Basically, they, they advise us where we can. You know, for example, we we get a survey, uh, survey for young people. Yeah. If we go to their schools, we will ask the teacher, "Oh, we got this to do, and we want to give it to young people." Yeah. And they will say, "Oh, okay." I can help you with this and they will... Now, uh, you say you cover the whole of Kirklees. Yeah. How easy is it for you to attend a meeting in Dewsbury? Oh, we don't meet at Dewsbury. Oh, where do you meet in North Kirklees? We don't meet in North Kirklees. Everybody, so joins, up, everybody joins up at the Boyne Jackson House, which is in Huddersfield. So although you cover the whole of Kirklees, mm. you actually meet in Huddersfield. Yeah. It's a bit parochial, isn't it? Uh, not really, no, because... Uh, your, your, your representatives come from all over? All over, yeah. Right, all over okay. Kirklees. I think that uh, we'll take a break at that point of, from this discussion yeah. and we'll go to a, a news item which has come up in Huddersfield just recently 
Um, you may know or you may not know that the iconic George Hotel in Huddersfield is back on the market and for three million pounds. Almost three years after the hotel shut down, this, this Grade 2 listed building is up for sale yet again. It was bought in 2013 by a dentist called Dr Altaf Hussein for just short of a million pounds. Huddersfield Labour MP Barry Shearman originally said that he wanted the George to become a high-class hotel. He has said that he always had his doubts that this owner had the capacity to deliver a, ho a successful hotel. What is needed is a major investor. And Barry Shearman has gone on to say that he's not surprised it's up for sale again. We'll now take a break. You can contact us on the weekly wind-up on info at kirkleyslocaltv.com, on Twitter at The Weekly Wind-Up and indeed on Facebook. However large or small your business, attracting new customers requires dedication and a lot of patience. Just like fishing, but you also need the right gear. Rods, reels, lines, hooks, sinkers, lures, tackle box, tackle bag, net, bait, gas gloves, clothes, and pocket knife lunch. Or you could simply advertise with KLTV. Online, grow your business and your clientele. KLTV, your vision made reality. Should have gone to KLTV. Welcome back to the Weekly Wind-Up. I'm David Ridgway. I've got two uh, quick messages to put out before we close. First of all, the... Um, the TV ads that the holidays are coming are back with us. Uh, Christmas is, is coming. The Coca-Cola bus has been in St George's Square and it's been handing out free drinks. We're not too sure whether those free drinks are the right things to have and uh, we have actually gone out into Huddersfield to get the views of the local people. <laughs> Visit the truck today. Bit more Christmas then? Yeah. Great yeah. okay, Christmas spirit, I guess. Free yeah. period. <laughs> <laughs> um, and are you aware of the amount of sugar that's in one kind of coke? Can you guess how many teaspoons of sugar? Two. Um, 16. 16? Yeah, in a can. Like five. Well, in fact, in um, a 12 ounce can of coke, there's 10, equivalent of 10 teaspoons of sugar. <laughs> so, does this put you off at all? No. <laughs> No. Are you aware of the amount of sugar that's in a can of Coke? Can you guess how many teaspoons that there are? Uh, probably like 20. Yeah. Well, in fact, in an average can of Coke, there's in fact equivalent of 10 teaspoons. Um, does, would this put you off drinking it? No, still wouldn't put me off drinking it. Are you aware of the amount of sugar that's in one can of Coke? Can you guess how many teaspoons? A lot, probably. I know there's a lot. I used to know, and yeah. I can't quite remember. Well, it's in fact, on a 12 ounce can of Coke is equivalent of 10 teaspoons. Wow. So does this, will this put you off? A little drink, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't drink fizzy drink a lot, yeah. so. And are you aware that in Diet Kirk there's a chemical called aspartame, which some authorities believe is much more harmful than sugar? Yeah. Did you hear it? Have you heard about that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So this is put your drinking Diet Kirk at all? I don't like Diet Kirk, so it's fine. Are you aware that in Diet Kirk there's a chemical called aspartame, which some authorities believe is much more harmful than sugar? I was, yeah. Yep. So it doesn't put you off either? It puts me off Diet Coke. Um, and are you aware that in Diet Coke there's a chemical called aspartame, which some medical authorities believe it's much more harmful than sugar? I've, I've heard about that, yeah. So this put you off drinking Diet Coke? Oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. I don't really go for the diet options. I know there's a lot of artificial stuff in it. Thanks very much. And finally, I'd just like to talk to you about Santa's helpers in Meltham who have just made Christmas for 15,707 needy youngsters. This operation, which is nationwide, has uh, created a warehouse at St James's Church in Meltham and they have been sending shoebox gifts to children in Liberia and Romania this year after spending 11 previous Christmases taking part in the project. The centre has uh, sent out more than 100,000 
of these, uh, of, of these gifts since they first started the project back in 2004. I think it's, that's a really heartwarming story. Uh, Judith Powell, the coordinator, said, We think there is so much love in these boxes that when they get into the hands of children in other countries, they're bound to feel that love. And that love is what's bringing us into Christmas. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be talking about crisis at Christmas and we'll be talking about the people who will have to be spending Christmas on the streets and what we should be doing about that. I would like to thank you, Isaac, for coming in today. Uh, it's always good to get the views of younger people. Of course, we always want to hear from you. And we can always be contacted very easily at info at kirkleyslocaltv.com, on Twitter at Weekly Windup, and on Facebook. A big thank you to you all. See you next week. <laughs>